Welcome back to the Code Wolf. Today we're going to take a look at Blazor component compatibility across the different Blazor rendering modes. Now, since .NET 8, we've had three different rendering modes for Blazor, which are server, interactive server, and WebAssembly. If you're unfamiliar with these different rendering modes, I have a whole video dedicated to this topic on my channel that I suggest you watch beforehand, but if you're generally familiar with what these different rendering modes are, you should be good to go for this video. So although .NET 8 has been out for a little while now, and a lot of developers are familiar with these different rendering modes, I still see a lot of confusion out there in terms of component compatibility. Or in other words, if we write a component, how do we know which features will work on different rendering modes? Or how do we design our components to support the broadest surface of rendering modes possible? So in this video, we'll take a look at a sample app that clearly demonstrates which high-level features are compatible with different rendering modes. We've got a lot to cover here, so let's get started. All right, so please remember to hit subscribe or the like button to support the channel. It really helps out a lot. I want to begin with just one simple grid diagram here that kind of puts into context everything we're talking about. So over on the left, we have our high-level Blazor component features or capabilities. And then on the right, we have a column for each of the Blazor rendering modes that are available to us. And let's take a quick look at these features. So obviously the most basic capability is just rendering Razor markup and computing C-sharp logic. And obviously all three of the rendering modes can do that. But as we start to go down this list, things get a little more interesting. So for dynamic UI interactivity, the interactive server and WebAssembly rendering modes have full support for this, but we see a gray circle under server. That's because Blazor server can achieve some of this through some JavaScript helper files, but in general does not support rich interactivity in the browser. Now, in terms of direct access to server resources, obviously Blazor server and interactive server can both accomplish that, but WebAssembly doesn't have any direct access to the files on our server. And as we go down this list, offline capabilities, only WebAssembly can do that. And for pre-rendering, here server and interactive server have full support, but WebAssembly only has partial support since this is really only possible using a hosted WebAssembly solution, but we won't get too much into that right now. Instead, let's switch over to a sample app that kind of interactively demonstrates all of these concepts. So over in VS Code, I have a pretty standard .NET 8 Blazor app open. And so we have a project here called Component Compat, or for compatibility. And we also have a separate client project. So this will be the Blazor WebAssembly code that gets sent out to the browser that lives in its own project by default in .NET 8 and gets sent over there by itself. So any WebAssembly specific components live here. Now for this demo, I've created three different page components that all have the same code. And obviously that's not great reuse, but I just wanna clearly demonstrate this using three separate pages. So we have one component for each rendering mode. We have Blazor server here. We have Blazor interactive server. And of course we have interactive WASM or our WebAssembly. And again, all three of these files have the same code. So we'll just look at one of these as an example. So we basically have an H2 for each of those high level features we looked at on the grid. So we have render markup and perform basic logic. And here it's just doing a date time dot now with Razor syntax and some basic math. We also have an interactive UI header here. And in this case, the user can click a button to increment this counter variable using this on click method. And then we have another H2 for accessing server resources. So down in our code block, we have a function to handle that incrementing when the user clicks. So it'll increase the counter by one. And when the component initializes, it tries to read a file from the local file system and if it can't, then it writes out an exception. So this is all easier to demonstrate if we actually just head out to the app, which is already running. So out in the browser, there's nothing too interesting on our homepage, but over on the left, we can see a link to each of those same components that are being rendered with a different rendering mode. So if I were to click on this server link, so this is our Blazor server page, this was all rendered server side. Let's look at the first component capability, which was rendering markup and performing basic logic. And of course, yes, our Razor markup was processed and we have our date and we know one plus one equals two. So obviously this basic capability is working. And if we switch to our other two components, sure enough, it's working on both of those as well. 
Now, things will start to get more interesting if we go back to our original component and we have this interactive UI capability. So if I were to click to increment this, you can see nothing happens. Our counter is still staying at zero and that's because this is set up to be an interactive button click with that on click method. And if we look at our network tab, so if I were to zoom in here, as I click this, you can see nothing's happening. This is just a static page that doesn't have that kind of interactivity. However, if we switch over to our interactive server page, now as I click this, it will of course increment, and that's because this is all happening over an interactive SignalR circuit. And if we switch over to WebAssembly, of course that will work as well, so there's our counter working just fine. So let's head back to our original component, and if we look at this access server resources capability, so this is trying to load a text file off of our machine, and of course that works on the server side. So it says the file contents are, there was once a developer who lived a stress-free life writing code. That's our fairy tale dot text that we wanted to load in. Well, now let's see if this works on interactive server. And of course it does. There it is, it loads right in because we can access that file from the server. Now, if we switch over to Blazor WebAssembly, in this case, it just says the files could not be read. Now remember, if we go back to our WebAssembly component, that was our error handling text. So we have this try catch block. It's trying to read that fairy tale file that the other two modes were able to, but we just get an exception. And so it sets that as the content. Now there's one other capability we can test in the browser here if we go to our network tabs in the browser. So I'll expand this a bit to make sure we can see everything, but let's see which rendering modes support offline capabilities. So if I were to go up to our network throttling here and just set this as offline entirely, since we're on the Blazor WebAssembly component, this will actually continue to work if I click increment. And that's because it's all happening right in the browser. But let's go back up to our interactive server and you'll see if we navigate, we can't even go over there right now because we're offline. So I'll switch this back to no throttling. And now we're on a Blazor interactive server component. And remember, this is using a SignalR circuit. So right now it's working fine because we enabled our connection again. But if we go offline, this will also break. So even though this is interactive, it relies on that circuit back to the server in order to be interactive, but it can't do that when we're offline. So this does not support offline capabilities. So let's enable this one more time by selecting no throttling. And let's go back to our pure Blazor server component, which is rendered all server side. And this never worked in the first place. And so if we go offline, that will still not work. So I hope this clearly demonstrates which rendering modes support which high level capabilities of Blazor components. When you're designing your components, just keep in mind this grid and the concepts we looked at so you can understand which rendering modes will support the features that you're trying to implement. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time right here on the Code Wolf.